Beloved, welcome back to the shop. I had the misfortune of, well, being subjected to public, a, pub, a U.S. public school education and all of the misery that comes with that. My mother used to tell me, if you don't start doing better in school, you're going to be out there digging ditches. Well, that's exactly what I found myself doing, digging di ditches as an excavating contractor. I never went to college and, well, the trades were, well, that was what was for me. So when it comes to shovels, I can speak with some authority on it. There are two pieces of equipment that every professional homeowner should have in his arsenal. You don't need a ton of stuff, but you do need two. And one is a spade, and the second is a flat point shovel. Now, you may have seen these at the hardware store. You may even own a lot of these, and not all of these are created equal. The spade shovel is one of the most versatile and useful pieces of equipment that a man can own. And when you couple that with a flat point shovel, there's just so many things that you can do and accomplish. Now, it's really difficult to find quality tools anymore, and they're not all created equal, as I said. A guy that wears a size 7 shoe is very different than a guy that wears a size 12 shoe. You know, the reason why we have different clothing is because we have different body types. But manufacturers only offer one or maybe a couple solutions. If you go to your True Value hardware store, you may see a few or a variety of them, but generally the handles are all going to be the same size. Me, at six foot four, I require a different handle than a short king that's at five seven, right? It's going to be a different, we're not going to be using the same tools. So I wanted to go into the two tools that you should have and how to pick out quality ones. When it comes to a spade shovel, it's, what I prefer is, the firefighting shovels. You know, we've talked about this before. They're a little bit different in that the angle right there. That's the first thing. You know, normal sho normal shovels are going to be flat. If you pull one out of the rack at Home Depot, it's going to be straight. Now, these are made for stomping and digging. They're not very good for moving materials. If you try to move gravel or dirt with one of these flat shovels, you know, you, you have to be at a very unnatural angle. You have to be almost down on the ground when you're scooping. You can see why this design is better. Not only that, but it's made from a hard, a forged steel. Thicker, heavier, much stronger, and it's gonna hold an edge better. You can sharpen it and do a lot more work with it. It's gonna have a wood handle instead of plastic or fiberglass. Plastic handles are garbage. They should never be used. They're difficult to hold on to. Uh, they don't last. If you get them out in the sun, they'll fade, they'll warp. They're just, they're miserable, horrible things to work with. Fiberglass is not so bad. If you don't take care of tools and don't want the maintenance that comes with a wood handle, then fiberglass could be an option, but it's also very fragile to crushing. And it, and it make, takes more effort to work with because you have to, because it's so slippery, you have to hold on to it much tighter, which tires out your hands and your arms and just makes for a more difficult and longer day of work. A wood handle is best because it doesn't give you blisters. It's got enough texture to it where it's easy to hold on to. It's not cold. It's not hot. It's just the ideal material. It's the tip material that the Almighty provided for us to make our tools out of. So a good spade shovel like the fire shovels, I really recommend. When it comes to handle lengths, if you are a shorter person, look at something that's about, you know, maybe three foot long or so, 36 inches. I like my stuff th three and a half feet, 42 inches right around there. So a lot of times I end up having to make my own custom handles because I just can't find stuff long enough. I have long arms, long body, torso, and I just need, unless I wanna be bending over and breaking my back all day long, I, I like to have a little bit longer tool. But with the fire shovels, you can get them either way. The second shovel, and really this is what you need, the one-two punch right here, is gonna be of a square point or a flat point. <clears throat> this is an excellent tool. These are made by Razorback. This is one of the very few companies that I'm aware of that are still made in the USA. You can see very proudly stamped USA. You'll also notice that this one is aluminum. This shovel was, uh, my granddad turned me on to these. He always used these. He was of the opinion that he would rather have the lightweight of the aluminum shovel that was a little bit bigger than having a steel shovel. Now, if you're scraping concrete all day long, this is going to wear down pretty quickly. But if you're just a regular professional homeowner and you may be shoveling some bark dust, you may be shoveling some snow, you might just be you know, scooping up whatever, uh, the aluminum is the way to go because you can get a larger shovel 
with a fraction of the weight. And if you're moving a lot of material, like bark dust or a big pile, you have something delivered to your house, those metal sh shovels of this size, uh, unless you're Andre the Giant, most guys, it's just too much. It just will just wear you out. Where an aluminum shovel is so light and so flickable, and look at the size you get there. It can do everything that a metal shovel can do, I think, better, but without that additional weight, at the cost of a little bit of durability. So look into the Razorback. You'll see it's classic. They always have the red stripe on them. A good shovel is going to run you, figure $200 for the pair, you know, give or take. You might be able to save 40, 50 bucks on that if you shop around, but just go ahead and budget about $100 for a shovel. That's going to sound like a lot when you compare it with the offerings you're going to have at the big box stores. But I'll tell you, if you take care of these, they will last you a lifetime. My granddad had his aluminum spade shovel uh, 40 years, 50 years, long, long time. And again, not a problem. If you invest in a couple of nice tools like this, you're going to want to maintain them. You're going to need a mill bastard file, boiled linseed oil, and some ballastol or your choice of metal protectant. There, there's very little you need to do. At the end of the season, do a couple things. Take your mill bastard file and keep, knock off the edges. I'm not gonna do it for audio. <laughs> the audio will go crazy here, but keep these sharp, knock off the edges. They'll work, function much better. And always, always put a nice coating of boiled linseed oil. Now, if you have a brand new tool, most of these are gonna come with varnish on them. Take a knife and scrape off that varnish down to the bare wood and then apply your boiled linseed oil. The rule of thumb is every day for a week, every week for a month, every month for a year, and then annually after that. Once you get a good tool handle with a nice patina on it, then only about once a year will you need to rub the boiled linseed oil on it. Just pour it into a rag, rub it in there, nice coat, wipe off the excess, don't let it be dripping and running all over the place, and you're good to go. On your metal shovels, they're gonna corrode and rust, so you wanna protect them, don't leave them outside. You, usually t you tend to take care of tools that are important to you. When you spend $100 on a shovel, you're not likely to leave it outside anyway. But what I do is I just use my ballastol, put it on a rag, and just make sure after you coat your boiled linseed oil to give it a good coating of ballastol or M&P or whatever your favorite product is, and that will go a long ways. File it, sharpen it with your tool, or with your mill bastard file and put it away and it'll be good for a season. You probably noticed the orange sheath on the spade shovel. This is typical of a US Forest Service firefighter shovel. Now these shovels have to be used in um, vehicles, inside vehicles or transported as well as aircraft. And we keep them very sharp. Uh, and if you've never worked with a sharp tool, a sharp edge shovel, it makes your work twice as easy, especially if you're cutting through sod and, and having to dig with anything. So these, Sometimes the shovels will come with them, but if, if you find a fire shovel that doesn't have one or you find one used, if you go on eBay, I often see these, 15, 20 bucks, uh, they're all standard. The cool thing about the FFSS or the US Forest Service fire shovels like this is that they're all exactly the same. They're made by contract by several different companies, but if you buy one that's a proper FSS fire shovel and it will be stamped on there, it'll say heat treated. Many of the good ones are made in Ireland these sheaths will all fit. And it, it really, it, it keeps the shovel nice. Uh, if you have it in a van or a vehicle, if you get in a rollover, these are dangerous. Uh, they're edged weapons, edge tools, and I think it's a good idea. I used to think it was safety sallyism, but after using them, uh, I, I'm, I'm sold on it. And I always, I, it just, I don't know. It just makes it more special. It tends to, you tend to take care of it more. And when you look at it, it just, it's just a reminder to you that this is a proper tool. This isn't just some garbage out of the garden shed uh, that I don't care about and don't look after. And I don't know, it's, it's just my personal bugaboo but, uh, or personal hang up, but uh, I like it. So that's it. So if you're looking for uh, tools to survive the coming collapse, this would be a good choice. Get yourself a good spade and a good flat point. And it's an amazing the work you can accomplish with these tools and just insist on quality, get a good brand, take care of them, and they'll last you, last you the rest of your life. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you all on the next video.